Tesla shares uh, sinking in the pre-market. Phil Lebeau joins us now with a closer look at the delivery numbers that it released and maybe the detail that it, it changing a little things about uh, about the actual process of manufacturing or delivering or what did, did Elon Musk say? It's uh, more the so. delivery and, and it's the in-transit process that is behind the miss for the third quarter in terms of deliveries. And would you just take a look at that little lower thirds box that they've got there? Tesla Q3 delivery miss. If you're getting your Tesla news from CNBC, you're gonna have a bad time. They just don't have a clue what they're talking about. Or actually, it's not that they don't have a clue, it's that they're being paid to talk about the wrong clue. It's a big difference. And we're gonna let him finish what he was saying there, but here's the thing about the news. They have their agendas, and there's always going to be some piece of information that fits their agenda. And if there isn't, they can twist one to make it fit their agenda. That's exactly what's going on here. Tesla has their Q3 results, and CNBC's takeaway is, Tesla Q3 delivery miss. And while it's true that Tesla missed analyst expectations for Q3 deliveries, they really only missed by about 6%. And what it turns out is that they produced enough cars to hit their expectations, they just had some trouble getting them delivered in time to make it for the quarter. As a Tesla investor, I'm much more concerned about production than deliveries, so it doesn't really bother me that much at all. But CNBC gets to pick what they want to be their headline for their show, and in theory, they want it to be the most interesting or the most meaningful piece of information for their viewers. But as we know, because of their agenda, it has to be negative when they're covering Tesla. So listen to this almost unbelievable number that if CNBC wasn't biased, they for sure would have had this as their headline. Tesla doubled its profit from Q3 of last year. No, but really, year over year, making their profit double is actually insane, especially considering all the complexity with the current global supply chains. Everyone else in the industry is losing profit hand over fist. For example, Ford, who currently sells the second highest amount of EVs in the US, is taking an absolute beating with regards to profit. Barron said Ford projects third quarter operating profit of 1.4 to 1.7 billion, Wall Street is looking for 2.9 billion. That means Ford is somewhere around half of what Wall Street analysts had projected their operating profits to be. And Ford claims this big difference is because their inflation-related supply chain costs are going to be about a billion dollars more expensive than they expected, which seems reasonable, but think about what that means. Tesla is experiencing similar, if not the same, inflation-related supply chain cost increases, and yet Tesla still managed to double their profits year over year, while Ford cut theirs in half. This is the kind of reporting I would hope to hear from the mainstream finance media, but of course, we are not gonna get it. By the way, when Ford reported this painful news, their stock dropped over 12% which was the worst day they had had in over 11 years. This is a big deal. So you can see how much context matters. It's not that Tesla just doubled their profits, it's that they doubled their profits in the same market that one of their competitors' profits got cut in half. That's the kind of thing that shows just how dominant Tesla truly is. But there's a lot more to this story, so let's let CNBC finish their thoughts on Tesla delivery numbers. Here's the numbers for Tesla for the third quarter. The expectation was for delivery of 364,000 vehicles. The company delivered 343,000, about 6% light of expectations. But the bulls will say, hey, look, they produced 365,000. They really hit the target if you think about it. They just didn't deliver them. Why didn't they deliver them? In a press release, Tesla said it is becoming increasingly challenging to secure vehicle transportation capacity at a reasonable cost during these peak logistics weeks. And there you have it. Tesla missed their delivery numbers, but it wasn't because of production, like I said earlier. So it really doesn't make me that nervous. It seems like a non-issue. And if they really wanna focus on the deliveries miss, they're welcome to, obviously it's their show, but let's just look at what a deliveries miss for Tesla actually means. This article from Teslarati sums it up perfectly. 
In Q3, Americans continued to display interest in electric vehicles, buying just over 200,000 units in total, roughly 63% of which were Tesla vehicles, 131,000 units. Tesla's closest competitor, Ford, totaled 18,000 electric vehicles sold in Q3, according to Kelly Blue Book. And while this shows the Blue Oval has made significant strides in recent years, they still have a long way to go. And this is the sort of context that really shows the state of the EV industry. Tesla's missing their deliveries numbers, and yet they're selling over seven times as many EVs in the US as second place Ford. While we're constantly hearing that whatever the next EV that comes out is a Tesla killer, as of today, none of them are even close to putting a dent into Tesla's sales. GM keeps its Tesla killer on schedule. The company's Cadillac brand has kept its focus on getting its new vehicle done on time. Next great hope for Tesla killer is the Ford Mach-E crossover SUV. GM will again plug in its Tesla killer. General Motors in September had suspended the production of this symbolic and hugely important vehicle for a battery related problem. The media is always trying to convince us that the Tesla killer is right around the corner and they've been doing that for years. The truth is the EV race in the United States isn't a race at all. It's an absolute domination by one company and that's Tesla. This is Usain Bolt racing against seven year old children and yet the media will never tell you that. Tesla sold over seven times as many vehicles as second place Ford. That's more than just a commanding lead. And we also hear about how Rivian or Polestar or Audi are sneaking up to take the lead, but it's just not true. Perhaps most shockingly, the Tesla Model X, the brand's least popular model, only selling 6,500 units, still outsold Rivian, Polestar, Audi, Volvo, Nissan, and Mercedes-Benz, to name a few. The least popular Tesla is outselling the vast majority of EV makers in the US. That is absolutely nutty. But of course, CNBC isn't going to mention any of this. They're just gonna say that Tesla missed deliveries because they have to make it a negative story when they're covering Tesla. It's painful to watch, but at this point, so many people are waking up to the fact that CNBC and others like them aren't trying to put out accurate information. And every time they cover a story like this with their framing, they lose that many more viewers that used to trust them, but now they're wisening up. Oh, and while we're here, I wanted to correct a mistake that I made in my Tesla Semi video. I said that because Tesla's moving forward on the Semi, which is going to come to market in December, that means that they're no longer battery constrained, but I was wrong on that one. In this Q3 update, Tesla said, battery supply constraints will be the main limiting factor to electric vehicle market growth in the medium and long terms. So that could mean that in the short term, they aren't the main limiting factor, and that's why they're pushing the Semi out. Or it could mean that while they're still battery constrained, they decided they wanted to push the semi to market. A bit of a bummer, I was hoping they'd gone ahead of their battery production issues, which would mean they could increase a bunch of stuff, including grid scale battery storage, but it looks like batteries are going to be an issue for years to come. Uh, editing Sam here, I just realized after re-watching this that they said battery supply constraints will be the main limiting factor to electric vehicle market growth in the medium and long terms. They didn't say for them, they just said for the market. So they actually might not be battery supply constrained. It might just be the market as a whole that's battery supply constrained. So I take back what I'm saying. I'm not entirely sure what they mean, but anyway, all right, that's it. Regardless, Tesla made leaps and bounds this quarter, even if the mainstream media won't acknowledge that fact. They've also now sold over 900,000 vehicles this year, and considering Q4 has traditionally been their best quarter, they're set up to sell well over a million. Closing thoughts for this one is, don't listen to CNBC for your Tesla news. You're gonna have a bad time. As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe. If you love the video, think about tossing some support my way on Patreon. We gotta fight the likes of CNBC somehow, right? Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation or taking advantage of consumers or whatever it is, send it my way. My info is down below like always. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you on the next one. Peace.